Associate Justice Anthony Kennedy wrote the opinion for the majority of the court. Joining in the majority were Chief Justice John Roberts, Associate Justice Samuel Alito, Associate Justice Clarence Thomas, and to portions of the majority opinion, Associate Justice Antonin Scalia. The essence of Judge Kennedy's majority opinion is the following. The court held that the notion that the machine or transformation test applied by the Federal Circuit in N. Ray Bilski was the exclusive test is rejected. That the statutory definition of process found in 35 U.S.C. section 100, not some judicially grafted definition, should govern what constitutes patent eligible processes. Justice Kennedy's opinion confirmed this point. The opinion further states that the Patent Act specifically provides for special defenses for patents which covered a method of doing business or conducting business. Therefore, business method cannot be per se unpatentable subject matter. Justice Kennedy goes on to say in his opinion that while the claims at issue in Bilski were not patent eligible subject matter, it was because they are attempts to patent abstract ideas, not because they failed to meet some categorical rule formulated to address inventions from a prior century. Yet Justice Kennedy's opinion left open the opportunity for the Federal Circuit to carve out new boundaries for patent eligible subject matter in the future which are consistent with the purposes of the Patent Act and not inconsistent with its text. Justice Kennedy's opinion went on to say that the statutory text of Section 101 and the definition of process in Section 100D do not limit processes to those that pass the Federal Circuit's machine or transformation test. Justice Kennedy's opinion endorsed Judge Rader's dissenting opinion from the Federal Circuit that the Bilski patent claims are unpatentable simply because they are abstract ideas. Yet, the decision provides no additional guidance as to how to determine patent-eligible subject matter. In essence, the court states that the existing laws are sufficient and further endorse the traditional holdings that laws of nature, physical phenomena, and abstract ideas are expressly prohibited by the Supreme Court precedent as unpatentable subject matter. Justice John Paul Stevens entered a concurring opinion to which Associate Justice Stephen Breyer, Associate Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and Associate Justice Sonia Sotomayor joined. Some say that Bilski is a remarkably inconclusive contribution to the law on patent eligible subject matter. One reason for the inconclusiveness may have been that the concurring opinion by Justice Stevens reads as if it were drafted to be a majority opinion. That opinion and the opinion for the court by Justice Kennedy reached the same conclusion on the merits of the specific patent application to wit that the Federal Circuit's affirmance of the USPTO's rejection should be affirmed. The Stevens opinion may have become a concurring one only after it failed to garner the necessary fifth vote. The relatively shorter Kennedy opinion reads as if it were drafted as a compromise statement later in the court's deliberative process. Justice Scalia, who declined to concur in two parts of the Justice Kennedy opinion and concurred in one part of the Justice Breyer opinion, may have been the potential swing vote. Justice Scalia's actions suggest that he was sympathetic with some of the views of the Stevens and Breyer opinions that advocated restricting the scope of patent-eligible subject matter, but that he he could not accept the categorical ban on business method patents espoused by Justice Stevens. In Justice Stevens' concurring opinion, he wrote for a four-member minority of the court that concurred in the judgment but would have categorically banned business method patents. Justice Stevens' opinion on the matter was extensive and included an exhaustive, and yet exhausting, review of business method patent precedent law. He further disagreed with the majority that the term process in the Patent Act should be defined as an ordinary reader would understand the term. Instead, Justice Stevens argued that the Patent Act is much more complex and that the word process means something special and entirely different from how a member of the public would understand it. 
Justice Breyer also entered a concurring opinion to which Associate Justice Antonin Scalia joined. Justice Breyer's concurring opinion was as brief and succinct as Justice Stevens' concurring opinion was long and exhaustive. Although Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer concurred in Justice Stevens' concurring opinion, he wrote a separate concurring opinion to which Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia joined. In essence, Justice Breyer emphasized four points. First of all, that Section 101 of Title 35 is broad but not limitless. Secondly, he stated that the machine or transformation test has been repeatedly used by the Supreme Court to determine patent eligibility and was a good test. Further, that the machine or transformation test has never been the sole test for patent eligibility, that the Federal Circuit State Street decision's useful, tangible result test was never endorsed by the Supreme Court. The last specific point, that is, repudiation of the State Street, quote, useful, concrete, and tangible, end quote, test, reflected the views of at least five justices and hence can be regarded as the holding of the court. The Supreme Court decision in Bilski v. Kapos is viewed to have significant implications while not providing any new bright line tests regarding the patentability of business methods or other process claims is yet considered to have significant implications across industry sectors. What follows now is, this, is how the Bilski case relates to different industry sectors. The Supreme Court's opinion in the Bilski v. Kapos case is seen as moderating the machine or transformation test requirement of the Federal Circuit in the N. Ray Bilski case, while also leaving little guidance as to what should be considered patentable under Section 101 of the Patent Statute. It is insightful to see the different responses of leading participants in e-commerce and software and business method patents. For example, Amazon closely watched the case as a ruling upholding a categorical exclusion of business methods for patentability could have led to the abolition of Amazon's patent on one-click purchasing. As it stands now, Amazon has a valid and enforceable patent covering one-click purchasing and uses this technology to its advantage. Thus, the recognition of business method patents as patentable is a victory for Amazon. Red Hat Corporation, on the other hand, wrote an amicus brief in order to express its desire that the Supreme Court place limits on the extent of the validity of business method patents in the software space. Thus, its interests are in contrast with those of Amazon. As one of the most successful open source operators in the software space, Red Hat, the maker of the Linux operating system, has a vested interest in minimizing the patentability of business methods. Red Hat has expressed concerns that the granting of patents has hurt open source and innovation by narrowly confining the processes within which software programmers can operate. Again, the Bilski v. Kapos decision was neither a clear-cut victory nor a defeat for Red Hat. Thus, while business methods can in fact be patented, they still will be limited by the abstract idea standard. It seems that all sides of the debate claim some measure of victory in the Bilski v. Kappa's decision. In a press release following the decision, the Free Software Foundation stated that the decision disappoints with the justices providing a narrow ruling and rejecting Bilski's business method patent. The software mess, states the Free Software Foundation, that the U.S. finds itself in today is a product of the U.S. judicial system and not Congress. It is therefore all the more disappointing that the Supreme Court failed to use Bilski to clean house and remove software from the scope of patentability. Yet, on a positive note, the Foundation states that the opinion does stress past decisions in Benson, Fluke, and Deere that clearly limit the patentability of software. In a press release following the Bilski decision, the IEEE, a known pro -pat software patent entity, stated that we are generally pleased that the Supreme Court did not introduce rules that would limit the scope of ideas available for patent protection in our current information age.
The Business Software Alliance went further and said that it welcomed the Supreme Court's decision in the Bilski case, stating that we strongly applaud the Supreme Court's ruling in the Bilski case. BSA President and CEO Robert Holliman stated that the court specifically recognized that applying the lower court's very narrow machine or transformation test would chill innovation in critically important 21st century technologies such as computer technologies. Holliman further said that our our industry is built on innovation, and the patent law provides critically important incentives for innovators. The Business Software Alliance is the world's foremost advocate for the software industry, and its members include companies such as Adobe, Apple, Microsoft, IBM, Intel, and a broad range of other companies who make and sell software products around the world.